Cristo Rey schools are college prep schools serving really inner city kids throughout the United States and schools that really survive because of the partnership that we have with corporate America where the kids work one day a week and their job pays for 70% of their school costs. We are in your face education by saying you can do this again, you can do this better, you can make it stronger. You need to expect just as much of them as you would a child who's going to any other prep school. I mean, we're getting our kids ready to compete in the world in college and beyond college. So we can't treat them like their economic circumstances determine who they are as people. The teachers, they play a large role in helping students move on to college because the teachers really care about you. Every time I felt like giving up, one of my favorite teachers here would always kind of give me a kick in the pants and get me going again, and it always worked. They're not just going to let you fail. They're going to go out of their way. They'll stay here till 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock at night to help you. This is the best place that I've ever taught. These kids blow me away every day with the things that they conjure up out of their brains and their hearts. They also impress me constantly with the way that they overcome some incredible challenges in their personal lives. You've been one of the earliest adopters of AMAT in the United States. Tell us what has been your overall experience in the last 12 months. We started out a little shaky. The product wasn't really ready for the U.S. market, but um, after getting back to the folks here in Chennai, they, they rose to the challenge and they, they fixed it up. And they also fulfilled my request for a lesson that would, that would grab people. Um, it was um, a lesson about growth and decline of a population of rats in a city, in some city. <laughs> um, and it wasn't perfect when we first got it, and I asked them to, you know, if they could improve it, and by the next day it was improved. So uh, I knew that they were very responsive and, um, and, and sort of nimble um, in that way. So we used it more and more, and Kids who want to learn the math can go home and, and do that. You know, I'm using it in the classroom, but, but the, the big payoff, I think, is for the kid who wants to learn. He's got this resource. He can run the same thing from class over and over as many times as he wants. And, and that's turned around a few kids. Um, this kid, Armando, went from summer school last year to top of the class this year, in a second. Um, and, and part of that was, was hay math. And he ran more lessons at home than anyone else. So would you say that um, kids, you know, kids can be engaged a little bit more and you can actually impact their attitude over a period of time using a program like this? Yeah, well, it's more professional content. You know, as, as, a, as a teacher drawing on the board, um, it's not as engaging as something that's moving and active and professionally done. So it's, it's inherently more engaging that way. And yeah, it's a hook. You know, it doesn't grab all the kids, but it's, it's one hook that, that will grab some kids to be interested in math. And that's the battle, I think. Once they get interested, um, then they can do the work. Until they want to do it, they, they won't do it. So, um, hey, math helps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how exactly do you use hey, math at school? Um, would be good if you could describe through some specific examples? Mm -hmm. um, well, I... I'll set up uh, my laptop, ready to go with the lesson, come into class, connect to the projector, and after the class is settled in, uh, run the lesson. I can pause it as much as I like um, and ask them questions in a Socratic kind of way. And um, you know, just go through the material and, and, and show them, like I said, professionally how these, uh, how these things work. So does it save you time in, in delivering the, the instruction in the classroom? Um, 
it saves me time and it gives me the advantage of not turning my back to invite them to talk to each other. So if, if I'm just touching a mouse on my laptop, um, I'm not just saving time, I'm also keeping the class more focused because they just don't have the opportunity to chat or you know, throw a paper across the room as the lesson's progressing. Right. Yeah. And wh what about the assessment side of things? You know, how, how do you use it? The way I've done it is to, to construct uh, a longish problem set for them. Mm -hmm. So this week you have these 25 questions. And since the questions come from the Singapore system, I can give them some challenging questions. So it's not just practice the same way uh, at Helper is. It's, it's a challenging question that they can work on together. They, they discuss it. It's, it's more of a project. And um, I give them a longer time frame. So I might give them a week you know, to do 20 questions. But they're more challenging and, and, and thought-provoking questions. Some of them can submit it online if they're savvy enough. But most of them just print it out and give it to me on paper. Um, I'd like to leverage the testing more because of the, the automatic grading. So if, 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 if I don't have to grade all weekend, I'm, I'm a happier person on Monday. So do you track the usage, um, you know, in terms of which kids have logged in and what lessons they've seen? Do, do, you, do you track that closely yeah. or? Not so, not so granular, granularly. Um, but what I'll do is at the end of the quarter, I'll go and specify the start date and the end date of the quarter, get the stats and give more participation points to a kid who's run a lot of lessons. But it's a multiplier effect because if they've run the lessons, they probably got the better grade anyway. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to be more <clears throat> proactive that way and, um, you know, say, if you don't run these lessons, your grade will suffer. Right. But um, we'll see how that goes. Okay. <laughs> so can we now uh, take a look at the, you were talking about exponents a little while ago and how you use the lesson in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Could you, like, demonstrate to us? Sure. Um, it's easy enough to get the kids to sort of memorize that a, uh, a zero exponent makes the uh, power equal to one. Mm -hmm. But what Haymath does is give sufficient examples to really explain why it is, mm -hmm. and then to extend from that idea into negative exponents. So here's a lesson that I use frequently. I probably use this lesson more than any other. <clears throat> is this for ninth graders? Um, I've used it ninth, tenth, eleventh, mm -hmm. you know, sort of reviewing for the eleventh, maybe an introduction for the ninth. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of stuff on the screen here. I don't know if you can take a look. It um, starts out with powers of 2 and shows that as you divide by 2, you can subtract 1 from the exponent. Mm -hmm. And it extends from what they know, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the cube, uh, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the 1 is 2. It extends that backwards. So, which is unusual, mostly you extend forward. So this is an extension backwards to 2 to the 0, and it very clearly shows that 2 to the 0 has to be 1 to fulfill the pattern. But then it does the same thing with 3 and 4. So to write this on the board myself would be crazy. It just wouldn't work as well. So this shows them that it doesn't matter what the base is, that basically anything except 0 right. raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. Right. So. They can see it. I don't have to write on the board. I can pause the lesson whenever I want right. and ask them, well, what do you think is going to happen next? <clears throat> and they, um, they get it, you know? And then the, the, the next screen here is for negative exponents. And it takes the tables from the previous lesson, or the previous portion of the lesson, and keeps going. You know, what, what happens when you divide 1 by 2? Well, you get a half. And then what happens when you divide that by 2? Well, you get a quarter. And it, it shows them why 2 to the negative 3 power is 1 eighth. Not memorize this because you have to, which is the way I was taught. And, and I think there's a deeper learning when they, when they understand why. And they demand to know why. It doesn't fly so well this, these days to just demand memorizing of, of formulas. Right. So this, this enables it, and again, you go through with the 2, the 3, and the 4, and, and you see that it doesn't matter what the base is, and this would be way too much to write on the board myself. In terms of the uh, HEMAT lessons, um, how has it been uh, collaborating with uh, the team to uh, customize some of the stuff for your own specific 
requirements for the math A curriculum mm -hmm. uh, because this this program you know was originally created for the Singaporean curriculum. Oh, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, at first it was it was much trickier to find the right lesson because. I had to traverse a, an index or a tree structure that was for Singapore, and my kids are, are not you know they're, they're a few years behind the Singapore kids so and, and things are mapped differently so it was it was a bit of a pain to to find the right lesson and, and um, it just wasn't you know matched to our textbook for example and having come here to Chennai, you folks have have done that so now there's an index from the math A sequence of topics into your pool of lessons. And now the teachers who were giving resistance to using Hay Math don't have that excuse anymore. And, and the students as well, they'd be able to go to chapter eight and just run all the lessons for chapter eight rather than have to get a, a list from me that they needed to type in and, you know, it was a little too much trouble. So um, that's been great, you know. There's, um, there's a real level of responsiveness from the Hayeth people here that you don't get from Microsoft or even even other software companies I've worked with in the states. Um, I think Hayeth has a or uh, Sankia Learning has a, a more long-term goal right. that doesn't nickel and dime the customer. So we just you know we're we're collaborators and you don't have to worry about the the money right. side of things so much. Right. It's, it's been fascinating that, you know, I met you in New York a year ago, and then 12 months later, you're now here in Chennai. Mm -hmm. um, flattening, flattening experience, right? So, um, what is your impression after having, you know, visited India for two weeks now? What, what, are, what are your takeaways? Uh, well, as I said, I'm impressed with the responsiveness of, of the team here and how I, I've sat down, you know, sort of in between meetings and things working on just reviewing lessons and saying this could be made clearer or make it more interesting or how about a little humor here and then the next day or two days later you come back with here's the lesson check it out so so that's been great um, I had an idea to provide a worksheet um, for the kids based on problems in the lesson mm -hmm. and I, I had done this myself I would sort of do a screenshot and cut and paste and do something in Word I said, wouldn't this be cool if, if this was in your product? And then a couple days later, there's, there's this, right? Here's that exact functionality, can you see? Uh, where I'm going to hand these out to the kids as they walk in the door, right. recoup that five minutes where they would be, you know, putzing around, right. and have a count, you know? So if it counts, oh, they're sitting down there working, right? So. Then, after they've, they've done this in the class, they'll be able to see the lesson run and see professionally, not my sloppy handwriting, but professionally, how to do the problem. And that was an idea that I had that's now going into the product. Right, so, so kind of innovating in real time. Real time is, is a good way to put it, yeah. I feel that I'm, I'm being part of uh, making math education better right. uh, in other parts of the world. And yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's something that wasn't possible right. five years ago. I'm, I'm logging into my server back home, and it's uh, just about as fast as if I was on a local area network. Right. So uh, th things have flattened. And, and what's your impression about India itself? Because this is your first visit to India, and you had the opportunity to visit one of the local schools here. Um, any, any first impressions about what you saw and the kids here? and? <laughs> Well, I think it's a wake-up call. Um, I'm going to try to go back to New York and, and really uh, give them concrete examples of how you as New Yorkers, you as Americans, will not get the good jobs because the people in India, the people in Singapore, are very eager to learn. And um, that was the most striking thing. In, in the classroom the other day, the teacher asked, all right, who didn't get a straight line? You know, they're graphing some linear equation. Who didn't get a straight line? And a couple kids raised their hand. Uh, it wouldn't happen in my classroom so readily. I'd have to walk around and ask because the, the kids in my classroom don't want to appear stupid. Whereas the kids here don't mind that because they don't want to fall behind. Mm -hmm. My kids don't mind falling behind. And that's the challenge um, for the states, I think, 
to, to, to motivate, uh, the, the challenge for the teacher in the States to, to motivate the student. And I can come back with snapshots and stories of, <laughs> yeah, you'll be working at UPS and, and these kids will be you know, running IT companies. So what do you want to do? You know, why, why don't you go home and run these hay math lessons? Is it really that difficult? It's not, it's not sitting down and, and you know, scratch work on paper for five hours. It's sort of entertaining if, if you put your mind to it and, and, and look at it positively. So that has, that has to be the biggest difference I've noticed, that, that people are hungrier here uh, for learning and um, for math in particular. Mm -hmm.